stars are forming, it lights up the gas, heats them, heats the gas, and then we can see where the stars are forming. Um, so the galactic ring survey uh, covered about 40 degrees in the galaxy, mostly in Aquila, a little bit Cygnus, a little bit further into um, Scorpius. Um, it contains two million positions, and it took about eight years, so a thousand hours of telescope time, about two million dollars. Thank you, taxpayers, for funding my research. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. And this is the whole survey. It's hard to display in an interesting way because it's a long strip. Um, so right around there, we're in Scorpius, and then we go through Aquila, and right around there, we're kind of in roughly in Cygnus. So let me just zoom in on a star-forming region. You can see from this picture how dynamic the star formation process is. This is the W51 um, molecular plan. W51, the W catalog is a catalog of radio objects that was um, uh, uh, Waterlout, um, who was a Dutch astronomer. After World War II, the Nazis had left behind some radars because they were at a hasty retreat from Holland. And they used these Nazi radars as radio telescopes. And so he used these, um, these, these radars to map the sky and to find bright objects. And he mostly got it right. Um, he made a few mistakes. W8 turns out to be the moon. So, all right. But this turns out to be a wonderfully active star forming region. They, there's a little cluster of stars forming right there. Actually, it's a fairly large cluster of stars forming right there. But you can see these wisps and filaments coming coming out of there. So star formation is actually a dynamic process. When stars form, particularly massive stars, they blow shreds into the, the clouds that they're forming from. They destroy them very quickly. <coughs> the problem with star formation is they the stars eat their parents. It's like, you know, the, the Kronos, the Titans, you know, the, the ancient Greek uh, myth of the, 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 the children eating their parents. What happens with stars is that the when high mass stars form, the process is so disruptive and so dynamic that it rips the parental material to shreds. So you only have a very quick moment to capture the process. So this is the challenge for an astronomer trying to study how stars form. Uh, why, why do you look at the 13 carbon instead of? That's a great question. On well, so 12 carbon, of course, is more abundant, it's brighter. Right. But the problem is that it saturates. It's so opaque that you can't see the structure of the cloud. You can't see through to the center of the cloud. And so the 13 carbon, which is rarer, is actually more transparent. And so it, it reveals the structure a bit better. And it's, it's about as bright. It's about six times fainter. But the trade-off between structure and brightness is, is worth the effort. Is that what we see in the um, pillars of creation, or the Eagle Nebula, yeah. where the stars blowing yeah. away? That's exactly okay. what you see. Yeah. So the the, the stars, the, the Eagles, are, is a great example. Mm -hmm. What's happening there is the radiation from the, the nearby cluster is eroding the clouds around it, and you have a little black cloud on front, and the the, the 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 thing behind it is in the shadow, so it survives. So let me talk a bit about how stars form. Star formation happens in four stages. The first is you have one of these clouds, and a piece of the cloud will collapse. So that's the first stage. Then in the center of that bit of collapsing cloud, which we call the electric core, you have what is called a protostar. A protostar is not a star yet. And because it, a star generates its own luminosity from nuclear processes, a protostar isn't shining from nuclear processes. It is just glowing because it's warm, because it has condensed. It's converting the gravitational energy into heat. So you see the glow in the infrared, just as you would see in infrared goggles, you know, humans or you know, missiles or, or whatever is slightly warm, black body radiation. Then a disk forms, which is a good thing for Earth, because without the formation of a disk, we wouldn't be here. The planets form these disks. So essentially, the study of star formation is, this, is the study of the origin of mankind. Or without the sun and without the earth, we wouldn't be here. So let me talk about. I'm going to just have to repeat that graphic. I spent days on that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in, in the first stage of star formation? We, have these, we see these molecular clouds throughout the galaxy. I just showed you the whole galaxy. The galaxy is just chock full of these. You see this molecular like survey. When a piece of the cloud exceeds, and so the, the cloud is pushed out by pressure is pulled in by gravity. When the gravity begins to win over pressure, 
the cloud will condense. So gravity pulls it in. So you have a chunk of cloud that suddenly becomes a little over dense, and if, the, if it becomes dense enough, the gravity overwhelms the pressure outward, and the cloud will pull itself in, this chunk of the cloud. And this is called core collapse. It collapses under its own weight. As that happens, as the, the cloud becomes denser and denser, as it pulls material into the center of the cloud, the, the material warms up. It's basically converting gravitational energy into thermal energy. It's turning the gravity into heat. And as, it, as that material falls in, it just heats up and becomes warmer and warmer. And in the center, you have this very dense bit that begins to get warm. And by warm, I mean in space standards. You know, it, the typical temperature in interstellar space is three degrees above absolute zero, three degrees Kelvin. I'm talking about things that become room temperature. That's really balmy for the for space, right? So these, these objects are actually <coughs> some, something like room temperature, 300 degrees Kelvin. And that's warm. Well, in fact, it's probably a bit colder than today, but... So, here's where I, I'll begin to talk about my own research. And I think you guys are dull enough now to understand, like, real research. So I want to talk to you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pander here. I'm gonna talk to you about what actually is going on. Um, the thing that I've been looking at for the last few years are these objects called infrared dark clouds. Now, the Air Force made this amazing survey of the galaxy with a satellite called the Mid-Course Space Experiment, MSX. And the reason is interesting. I mean, astronomy benefits from the military occasionally. And this is one of those cases. Um, infrared, of course, is a signature of incoming missiles, incoming airplanes, and, and so on. The military wanted to make sure that they understood where all the infrared emission on the sky was from so they don't go shooting down Orion. Right? <laughs> when the incoming missiles come, they want to know like, that, that infrared signal that they're seeing is not something in space. It's actually something from, the, you know, from the, the, in, the incoming missiles. So they made this detailed map of the infrared background. Um, so they made a map of the galaxy in the infrared. And one of the big surprises from this survey was these things, these black patches. They were utterly unanticipated. The thing is, as, as you go into the infrared portion of the spectrum, these clouds that are absolutely <laughs> opaque in the optical become more and more transparent. And no one expected these clouds, any cloud, to remain opaque in the infrared. And yet, here they were. These clouds were absolutely dark in the infrared, hence the interesting term infrared dark clouds. The stars are very clever in naming things. <laughs> Um, but no one, no one anticipated these, and what, what this means is you have enormously opaque clouds, far more opaque than we're ever anticipated for. And moreover, because they're dark in the infrared, they have to be very cold. If they were warm, they would be glowing in the infrared. So the fact that you see these dark patches means that you have very opaque, very dense, very cold clouds. And because of that, no stars are formed in them. If a star had been forming in them, they would have been lit up by them. It would be very warm. So these are extremely interesting objects. And for people who study star formation, this was a real indicator that we might be on to something here in terms of looking at the very earliest stages of star formation. How close is the nearest one, of course? Oh, the nearest one is a, like a kiloparsec away. They're typically three to six kiloparsecs away, at least the ones that we can see. You have, it's a geometry problem because the the galaxy, in order to see these, they have to be in front of bright um, emission from the galaxy. So you can't see them on the far side of the galaxy. They have to be on the near side of the galaxy. Um, the nearest concentration of, of molecular stuff is in, so, is in a spiral arm called the sputum arm. And it is, it's about three kiloparsecs. What is it about the infrared image that tells you that that is a cloud and not a hole? That's a great question, and, and without any other information, you have no idea. So it could be a hole in the background, that's exactly right. In fact, we made a catalog of these reported things, and it turns out that about 15% of the things we catalog are, are holes in the background. So what is it?